I can't repeat that question. The question like two minutes long. I think you got it. Sorry. Let alone the drive that she made for sure. Uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, the question, like, you know, he, they're saying that you know, if you know, you if you're going to school this. or you're going and doing work or so on, so then how can I, you know, try to fit in my time uh, the to, you know, like, yeah. to basically, learn basically, the, the, the question was, Mufti, everything that you talked about over the weekend was addressed to level. In. <laughs> okay, in general, what about the guys that have bad knees? The guys <laughs> that can't go to college and play sports. They're out of but. Uh, speaking metaphorically, yeah. what about the people that have serious responsibilities? Wife and stuff. kids. I can't go study. I can't memorize Guru What are you talking about? I work 12 hours out the day. So on and so on and so forth. Tell you, what is exactly. the advice to them? First and foremost is, uh, Jazakallah Khairan for a very beneficial question. It's very important. We say that, uh, first and foremost, why, I don't necessarily agree that that's the only thing we talked about, but it is a main thing. No doubt about that. As we said it ourselves. Why is that a main thing? And I'm saying this openly, not talking about no other speakers or nobody else, but everybody else is thinking like that. The awam, simple, basic, simplified, iman booster type of speech. And I'm not saying anything about nobody else, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but that's not hadith disciple. We give, alhamdulillah, uh, tons of reminders, five minutes of faidahs, all types of general things, Ibn al-Qayyim, heartwarming, Ibn Rajab. But one of the main themes and pillars of hadith disciple is trying to raise the bar with regards to seeking it. No doubt about that. So there's going to be everybody that's going to give the general talks to the sisters, to the older brothers, and our style is a bit different. That's number one. Number two is for us to get one good, solid student of knowledge, one real dedicated disciple, huh? We have to go at 500 people, just probably to get what? Maybe one, maybe two, maybe five. That's good. So in other words, we have to aim for the bullseye to get an eight to get a seven. But if we aim for six, it's gonna be at three and four. We gotta aim for 10 to be a little off the mark, which is very important. As far as the actual advice, the mana is, uh, knowledge has no age, has no age limit. No doubt, as he said, for some people that's things unrealistic. You're not gonna go travel to Yemen and sit for years, you have wives and kids, you have bills, you have responsibilities, no doubt. There's no doubt about that. And it's a very important point that you're bringing up for the Shabab to focus on their Shabab. Use your time. It's gold and it's precious. It's gonna go and it never ever will come back. So be smart, especially to the sisters who complain about having kids, a non-supportive husband. The sisters that aren't married, that are young, be wise and learn from the mistakes of those huh, who didn't take the advantage of the studies when before they had kids. So therefore, my advice to them is, knowledge has no age. It's not wrong with you listening, you benefiting, even if you can't memorize it, you can't keep up. If you hear an hour and you get one faida, well, it's not a loss. If you hear a whole lecture and you get three, four, five rulings, one hadith, you memorize, it's not a loss. It's not a waste of time. It's not a condition that every single thing you get from the class and you benefit from everything. La, 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 la. First and foremost, it's dhikr of Allah. Second of all, it's a majlis in which the Quran is being recited and studied. The words of the Prophet ﷺ are being studied. The statement, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi is being said. So you're getting reward. Even if you just sat and you didn't understand anything, it's a fa'idah. As far as if you can understand half of it, a third of the dhars, 70%. So that's a high percentage. That's a high percentage. But the specific nasiha is to focus on your Islamic obligations. It states in the hadith of Abidhar, collected by Tirmidhi and others, three hukuk, three rights. Number one is the right of Allah. Fear Allah wherever you may be. It's Allah's rights. Fear Allah what you say. Fear Allah what you listen to and what you watch. Fear Allah what you put into your stomach. How do you earn your money? Riba, pork, alcohol, bad, haram things, dislike things. Are you doing impermissible type of mixing? Are you involved in doubtful, shady things? Can you mix a lot on time? It take it out. How you feel that country? Wherever you may be. You go to the club, you smoke, you drink. You and your wife, she takes off a jab. You travel to another state to go have fun, to go to the club and dance. This is a reality. People do these things. It take it out. How you feel that country? So that's the first command is to fulfill the rights of Allah. And when you make a mistake, when you slip, when you forget when shaitan beats you up, your nafs overpowers you, 
then immediately make toba. Immediately feel regretful, feel remorseful. Immediately get back on your feet, dust yourself off, and do a good deed. Give sadaqah, pray, make tasbih, go visit a sick person, follow janazah immediately, and at the end of the night, that good deed will erase the bad deed. And that is the haqqul nafs. That is the right of your own soul that you have to fulfill. Last but not least, the hadith says, وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ يُخُلُقِ hasan And live with the people, deal with the people in an honorable manner. You see an older woman, an older man, your mother, your father, your children, your teacher, your neighbor, give everyone their due rights, even if it's a kafir, even if it's a dog in the street. You can't hit the dog with a rock or a stick. You can't chase the cat, cut the cat's tail off, as people do in Medina. You see cats walking around with no tails. Everybody understand this? You can't abuse anything. A kafir or Yahudi, unless the person is oppressing you and transgressing the boundaries against you. Then that's a different story. Fa'atabu mm -hmm. alayhim. Uh, it's a different story. I understand this. Don't make me go to high Idris unless you what? You force my hand. If that's not the case, then everyone has their rights. So this beautiful hadith is uh, something similar to, or, or not similar, but including what Hassan al Basri and Allah said. That Allah Azawajal gave Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam jawami on kanan. Inna wa ayamuru bil adli wa ihsani wa yanha wa al -bari. Hassan al Basri says, "Hadi al ayah lam tatruk khairan illa amrat bihi, wa lam tatruk sharran illa nahat anhu." He says, "This verse is so comprehensive; it's nothing good except that it told you to do it, and it's nothing bad and negative except that it told you to stay away from it." All right, that's the first type of jawami al kalim, laconic, comprehensive speech, and the second type is his words, his anecdotes, the things that he said, and from that is that hadith. Because those are the three levels of rights. Haqqullah, Haqqul Nafs, Haqqul Nas. Rights of the law, rights of your own soul, and rights of the people. So that's my advice to the general nine of five Muslims, is when you wake up in the morning, you go to sleep at night, make a checklist. And make sure everything you do and say, you eat, you drink, what you drive, where you drive to, falls under those three categories. Am I fulfilling the law's rights? Five daily prayers? Am I paying as a cat? Do I know the rules of the cat? Am I understanding this? Have I made Hajj? Have I made Umrah? Am I fasting properly? What do I know of the Quran? What am I studying from the Quran? How much do I my hand on a daily basis? Do I lower my gaze? Am I shaking women's hands? Am I flirtatious? Am I understanding this? A sister, is your hijab proper? You smiling and laughing, makeup and perfume? You have a high heel shoes or not? So the point is, is make a checklist from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. And make sure that you're falling under these three things. Am I giving the laws rights? Am I giving myself proper rights? Am I giving the people their rights? Once you do that, I promise and I guarantee it's going to change your life. And you're not going to have that much extra free time. Because there's enough struggle just looking after yourself. Looking after your wife. Looking after your kids. So on and so forth. So that's why I'm not saying that to them. Obviously, studying is, is ilm is nur. Ilm is nur. And the more you have, the more nur you'll have. But everyone doesn't have to be a professional student of knowledge. Everyone doesn't have to be a full-time student of knowledge. But the more that you learn, even though you work and you study, the better off you are. Last but not least, don't ever think or feel that if you don't have to be a student of knowledge, you shouldn't listen to the lectures. Everyone needs the reminder. Everyone needs to be reminded, needs to be educated. So there are classes and then there are lectures. You should listen to those lectures. And you should make sure that you listen to the Qur'an. Just like you finish the Qur'an at least once a month reading it, from Al-Fatiha to Nas, try to make it your goal to listen to the, the entire Qur'an once a month. Whatever your reciter is, whatever your favorite reciter is, make sure that you listen from Surah Al-Fatiha, from Surah Al-Nas, at least once every 30 days. Allah Ta'ala.